to get started? Sure. <laughs> yeah, we can stop talking about Asia. It's good. I'm all good. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Good, Joey. I was muted. <laughs> Let's start with the feet together and the hands on the head and hip circles. Joey, go. And changing directions. There he is. Slightly wider stance with the back flat as the hips roll back, body comes down, hips come forward, chest comes up, and continue. Got more of a challenge, bringing the hands to the center of the chest. And two more. All right, slightly more narrow stance. Same basic idea though, the hips roll back, body sinks down, head back is still flat, hips come forward and through, raising and dropping the elbows. Sink and lift. Focusing on that hip movement and back stability. Good, pushing into the ground as you sink. Make sure there's always energy going through the legs into the feet to help stabilize your knees. Two more. Last one. Very nice. Wider stance. Back once again, parallel with the ground. Turn looking past the hand. Stretching as you look. Seven seconds. Hey, Kate. Two more. And now the dip. Okay. Take those legs out for a second. Feet in about shoulder width. Same hip circles as before. 
Only now we're going to add in that swoop. The hip rolls back, the body fills that space. Make sure the hips are still rolling in complete circle. One more going this way, changing directions, focusing on that hip circle. Two more. All right, shake that out for a moment. Slightly wider stance, step to the side and lift. Good. Sinking the stance, grabbing the ground with the foot, pulling, maintain that centered balance, drawing back. Grabbing the ground. Two more. Good. Wider stance, turning to the side, concaving the chest, drawing the belly in, pulling that heel out of the ground, and back. Draw and back. Good. Short, sharp kick. Reset the posture, five more. Last one, change sides. Concave in the chest, drawing the belly, pulling the heel. Two more. Last one. Good. Hands atop the knees and knee circles. Change directions. Okay, bring your knees forward, around, and back. And back, around, and forward. Good, shake that up. Taking your left leg, arcing around and behind, belly drawing to the spine, head neck raising as I sink, making sure the hips and back are in alignment as I drop down. Raising up, initiating from the head neck, outside crescent kick with that front leg as it comes around and behind. From there, sinking to the other side again, posture is paramount. If I can only sink down this far while maintaining good spinal posture, 
that's as far as I go. And I can maintain that structure sinking all the way to the ground, that's great too. Kick it around for three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one. Sink. And up. Good. Shake that out for a second. A couple knee circles for each side. Change directions. Okay, next lead. Front foot comes across. Back foot steps up. Raise that front leg in a figure four. Turn and draw. A couple more nice and high. One, two, figure four. Turn to draw. From a side view, one, two, figure four. Turn to draw. Okay, a couple more. Two more. Good. Figure four is at that level drop. All right, so one comes across, two comes behind. Sink, pulling that shoulder back. Shoulder pulls the hip, pulls the foot, and two. Back is nice and straight, pulling that shoulder, Around three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, last one, ten. Good. Once again, feet together, hands on the knees, four little circles each direction. Okay, slow twists to the ground. So, feet are in parallel, belly to spine, head and neck are raising. As I turn, 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 maintaining that spinal posture, twisting, lifting from the head, neck. Twisting the other side, two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, two more. Nine. <clears throat> Ten. Good, everyone shake it out, get a drink if you need it. <clears throat> so while we're taking a pause, any questions from your last week of training? Aw, oh, Craig's got a buddy. 
So I've got some good news before we continue. Um, Kate and I have reached out to Daryl, um, Sonny, and Big Fritz, and all of them have agreed to do guest classes for us over Zoom. Hey. Hey. And they are all three of them just rad as hell. Daryl's a phenomenal Chun Tai Chi master, for those who don't know him. Sonny is my Shui Jia teacher in California, and Fritz is my brother who I travel to Beijing with. Um, and so, if any of you have requests for things that you want to get from the three of them, they've all kind of asked us to you know, kind of test the temperature what you guys all want. Um, Fritz could do Taiji, he could do Shingi, you know, he's awesome at both. Um, Daryl could do forms or just basics and, you know, whatever you want to know from Sunny in terms of, you know, throws and strength building, we can get that too. Sound good? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'm, sure that, I'm sure that's very exciting for people who know the, who those people are, but I don't need anything more than what you're giving me. So I you, might, you should, you I, should. I might check out those classes anyway, just based on your recommendation, but I'm really happy with what I'm getting here. They, they are three of my favorite martial artists on the West Coast. Um, <laughs> Daryl's amazing. I love Daryl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Daryl and Sonny are just at a tier, you know, beyond where I am. It's, it's so fun to work with them. So, everyone's knees doing okay? Yeah? Good, good. <clears throat> All right, let's do a little bit of Capoeira evasions to get loose from there, and then we'll move on. Sound good? Awesome. So, same basic sequence as last time. Step back to press, step out to dodge, down to guard. Good. Turn. One, <laughs> two, three. One, two, three for two. One. Two, three for three. One, two, and four. One, two, five. <laughs> One, two, six. One, Two, seven, one, two, eight, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> one, two, nine, and lastly, one, two, ten. Shake that out. Again, pause on the knees. <laughs> Other direction. Okay, let's do some T twice and kicks. Hands pressing to the side. Straight line, lifting from the head and neck, pushing the heel into the ground. From here, I'm gonna step, raise the back leg straight up. One, two, three. Other foot. One, two, three, continue. Pressing those hands away. It's a whole Star Wars trash compactor. Raising that head and neck. What about your joining? Jeans are challenging. Yeah. I don't wear them. I use some pants and don't let you kick someone in the face. I see no functionality at all. No. Pushing the heel into the ground, 10 more seconds. Good, shake that out for a moment. Okay, so we've done straight leg. Now we're gonna do a cross to outside. All right, so the strike is nice and slow and low in the beginning. So the basic movement of this kick is I cross my center line, and then from here, the foot travels around. Cross and pull. So it's not just a lift and reach to the outside. 
I want to make sure I'm crossing that center line first and then pulling the outside from there, okay? So the hands pressing, same basic idea, nice and slow. Step, back leg kicks around. One, two, three, two, three. Now some more oomph. Two, three, two, three, and kick. Push the heel into the ground of your support leg. Raising that head and neck up. Bracing with the arms. Both. What? Can I do this? Fine too. <laughs> I have epilepsy. <laughs> That's adorable. One more. Good. Shake that out. It's not funny. But you are. So, now I'm going to the outside to the in, crossing that center line. Okay. Arms bracing. Step. Cross that center line. And back. Step forward. Cross. Two. Three. Step. I was watching Kate. <laughs> Pushing those hands. More seconds. Last kick. Shut out for a moment. Next up, straight leg raise to the opposite shoulder. Okay. So again, as I press out, the side view. All right. So again, arms press, raise. I find it's really helpful to imagine the back part of this leg sinking down as the foot goes up. Holding those walls. Give me space. And more seconds. Last kick. Shake that out. How's everyone doing so far? For people that have theirs on um, unmuted, I, it keeps toggling back away from Joey. And so if you guys could mute it, you that would be great. You can pin his video too, if you go up to the little corner. Okay. Pin, it'll keep. Sounds good. Everyone's slapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So kick what I'm gonna do next. I have a plan. Oh yes, okay. With left leg forward, oops, arm's gonna raise and pin wheel back. Little finger leading the way. Big relaxed circles, shake out the joint. 50 each side.
50, change stances. First couple nice and slow. Arm as close to your body as you can, both the high and the low point of the circle. Good. From here, nice high horse stance. Get the fingertips as far away from your body as you can. <clears throat> Stretching and opening each joint as you pull away. So when my back is pulling away, my arms are pulling forward. I'm really trying to open those structures as I reach. The joints in the fingers, joints in the wrist, elbows and shoulder, everything is stretching. Ten more seconds. Keep holding. Good. And relax. Okay. Arms or legs? Any requests? <laughs> arms. Arms? Yeah, arms. Legs are worn on. <laughs> arms it is. Okay, some blood movement in again. So we have that shoulder tap, roll to flick. Back to tap, roll to flick. Again, twist, flick. The weight of the arms raises to drop, rolls to reach. Palm up, palm down. Up. Heavy arm down. And other arm. Tap, roll, flick. And for that tap, fingertips are tapping the shoulder, fingertips are reaching towards the partner. Pulling with the hip, pushing forward with the hip. Get both arms prepped, one in the shoulder, one in the reach. We're gonna go nice and slow for the first couple of these. It's like I'm rolling a ball as the arms roll through. The arms arc and both of them flick at the same time. I have that ball, I roll that ball. The hips arc and pull, flick. Roll, flick. Nice and slow. If you lose the coordination, if one arm is harder than the other, you can always go back to isolations for a second and then try to integrate both arms side to side. Once that basic movement feels more comfortable, you can take the movement more into the hips. Relaxing the upper body, letting it flow off that rocking side to side, opening and closing of the quad and the base. You playing with that for a second? I'm lost. <laughs> so Craig, roll, 
Back arm to shoulder, front arm extends. Roll. Back arm to shoulder, front arm flicks. Roll, flick, roll, flick. There you go, side to side, roll the flick, roll the flick. There, very nice, Craig. About 30 more seconds of this. Good, keep going. Good, Craig. So as the ball rolls, like you're holding a barrel, right? The barrel rolls. See, there's a barrel on the side. Flick, roll, heave, flick. Boom. So there's weight to this. It's kind of like I'm loading something heavy on my shoulders. And it starts out with that basic arm coordination, just this to this, that's a great place to start. But after the arms are clear, then we wanna get that roll moving through the belly, through the hips. Roll, drop. Very nice. Roll that ball, hoist it to your shoulder. Lift, drop. Very nice, Eric and Caro, good. Good, Chris. Very nice, Karen. There you go, Craig. Got the important parts. That's awesome. This is a trick one. We will touch on it again later on. Don't worry. We're not free from it. We're going to work on our three slices now. From there, we're going to go into Young Wolf Digging. We'll see how much time we have after all that. I would love to do the Bagua Yao Punch and Roll too, because that was just fun. So <laughs> we'll start facing towards the camera. As the arm rolls in, the hip rolls with, the palm turns to towards all of you. One. I'm gonna play with that for just a second. Good. We want, we want that roll, we wanna preserve the circles, those innate circles and the shoulders and hips, we wanna utilize those to create the space and the spring that we're gonna play off of next. So as I roll in, the foot touches. Check. Good. And back to that roll. Two, and now on three, drawing in. Check. Good. Back to that roll. Two and on three. Roll to check. Now from here, it's like I'm pulling down on a lever. As I pull that lever, the other arm's going to pinwheel up and over, slicing. Notice how my back is still straight from the lumbar. I've got that consistent concavity in the chest I have everywhere else my going for, and there's space in my armpit. So once more, just watch from the roll, check, slice. The slice comes around and is unimpeded by the rest of my body. I'm not getting in my own way and hitting my leg. I'm rolling into that empty space. Okay, so one, two, and on three, feet touch, step out, check. Pulling down that lever to pinwheel the other arm, slice. From here, lift. Imagining that this is underneath the part of the opponent's armpit and we're throwing them over this leg backwards. All right, so let's try again. Rolling in, one, two, and on three, touch, check, slice, throw. Good, twice more on this side. One, two, and on three, roll, check, slice, throw. Once more, all of us together, and I'll watch all of you. One, two, and on three, check, slice, throw.
Good. Try that a couple more times at your own speed. Well, I go feed to feed. Good, Karen. The three parts are all there. Watch me side body for a second, Karen, as I roll. Check and see that the, how this one rolls down, the other begins to lift. Yeah, as you take that step, see how my foot kind of arcs around and in, pulls the arm with it. There you go, good, good. Watch me once more. So as I roll in, there's that touch, and there's a big circle I'm about to describe, right? I describe that circle, I step out on that circle. That way I avoid taking a big step here, which can feel kind of clumsy in your hips, right? Just like an Aikido, I want to roll that circle in, roll that circle out for the catch. I'm going to ascribe another circle with that back foot as I slice down. And then here's a little step to get underneath the partner as I raise for that throw. You know, that wild horse part is made from Taiji. Okay, so the, the initial circle I'm trying to this is something that would be easier to see in person, but sure. um, so as you're as you're drawing in, you're you're brushing forward with your foot against the floor, and then and then you're brushing out as you take that first step. So if I'm here and my hips are at a 45 degree angle, right? So my right leg is 45 here. As I come in, it's going to arc in, drawing into that arc here, then coming out the other side as I check. So okay, so your foot is traveling a little bit behind you and then a little forward. Right, and that way. There's no awkward, you know, rise and fall in the movement. We can maintain right. continuity of flow from the shoulders all the way forward. The issue with the high step here is now the four spectres split, right? Yeah. It's raising and it's forward. Whereas I draw in here, I can maintain everything on that plane and it, it, a lot more preserves I move through. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Thanks. Awesome. awesome. And so once more, so you can see as I roll in, I step out for that check. Here's that pull. And again, I'm not going to step through, but you have the same problem. Right? I'm going to pull around that slice. There you go. And then from there, little step forward and raise. Good, good. Just like you've caught the person right here, you have their arm. This arm is under their armpit, and you're just throwing them back over your leg. Yeah. Just like that. Very nice. Thank you. Of course. All right, Eric. Uh, quick question. You're all doing phenomenally well with this. This is a great one to practice at home. Also, if you have a nice long stretch, you can just walk across it. Having a good Randall time with this one. It's one of my favorite shoulder opening exercises. And it actually has a really decent degree of combat efficacy. Those heavy arms, those big shielding movements are a lot of how we fight in Pal Twin. Let's do, so you have 45 minutes, or 14 minutes left. Let's do a little bit of wolf digging, and then we will end with our yao punch. Everyone's body still doing okay? Sweet. So for this next one, we're going to want to find a target, okay? It can be my face. It can be you know, something in your room. That's fine. The setup for this, feet at front foot at a 45 degree turned in. Back foot slightly more of an angle. So the back foot isn't quite straight in, but it's more straight in that front foot. If my legs are straight here, I'm gonna pivot my hips, my chest is square, pulling my belly to my spine, concaving that chest, and the reach is gonna roll to strike. Hand goes above the ear, goes up and over the arc of the ear as it extends, draws back. One arm falls, other arm raises. Slicing that center line. Each hand falling in the exact same spot. Palms grazing that side body hip as they come up. Forearms grazing as we come up and over. Gravity for that drop. Every few moments, make sure the belly's still pulling and the chest is still concaved. Reaching evenly with each arm. Keep going. Very nice, Chris. Good, Carol. Keep those elbows in just a little more, Carol. 
It's exhausting. <laughs> this one's exhausting. And so again, if you get tired, keep going, just go slow and precise. As you want to accelerate, the first thing you want to accelerate is that gravity drop. Like gravity just carries its weight down. And that will give you a pretty decent idea of how fast to raise the other arm. Once you're kind of spinning with gravity, then you can bring the hips into it and accelerate. But you want to make sure that you're using gravity as much as you can because gravity is free. We've already paid for it. Keep going. Good. Left elbow in a little closer, Karen. There you go. Good, Craig. Excellent. Changing stances. Again, take a second. Front foot's at 45 degree angle. Back foot is almost straight in. If the leg starts straight like this, I twist, drawing the belly back, squaring off my chest. Notice how I have one heel approximately for under each sit sense bone. So I'm not on a tight rope. I have a nice, you know, well balanced stance. From here, first few, just reach and let them drop. Get a feel for that movement. Maintain that belly draw. If the belly's drawing, the hips will naturally begin to move. As the head and neck raises, you can get more space in the shoulders. And then from there, the arms come over the angle of the ear to the apex of the ear, and then down. Not, it's not slicing the ear, it's up and over. Keep playing with that. Very nice. Hands graze the hips, Chris. There you go, Chris. Very good. Good, Craig. Up and over the arc of that ear. Very nice, Eric. Complete reach, Eric. Pulling side to side. There you go. Get a bit more into your hips and chest. Good. Very nice, Eric and Caro. And Karen, this is coming really, really well. You've never had a lesson in this in person. You're doing awesome. The arm movement looks good. The base looks good. Every so often, just spot check to make sure that belly and chest are still concave and that you're rolling around those structures. 30 more seconds. Awesome, shake that out for a moment. We're gonna do reverse digging next. So reverse digging is pretty similar to ball rolling. The major difference is that ball rolling is a little more sophisticated. Ball rolling has those hands constantly rotating with the shoulders, right? For reverse digging, we're just scooping. Scoop, 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 draw down the middle. The stance is the same. Front foot 45, back foot almost straight, pulling those hips in scooping as you draw up. Draw up and in, drawing to that center line. Again, if you're exhausted, it's okay to go slow. Just make sure the movement's complete. You can still get a good workout Going nice and easy with this as you get more comfortable. Again, let the gravity drop this time in behind, help fuel the raise of the hand in front. Once that gravity drops, timing feels solid, then you can start pulling from the belly and hips to accelerate. But again, make sure you're using every bit gravity gives you. So you can see how concave my chest is. Keep rolling. Good. Drawing down that center line. Beautiful form, Craig. Very nice, Caro. Concave the chest a little more, Eric. It's looking wonderful, Karen and Chris. There you go, Eric. 30 more seconds.
those last 15, let's accelerate it a bit if you can. And shake that out for a second. Very nice. And we still have one more side. Let's do that other side. Front foot turned into 45. Back foot, toes pulling almost to straight in. Legs start straight, and then both knees bend a little as we pull the belly in, opening that back quad, closing that front quad, concaving the chest. First few movements, nice and light. Even though it's the same activity, it's gonna feel a little different on the other side, take some time with that. Once you get comfortable, working that gravity assist, playing with that drop of the arm to raise the other. Once there, the hips start fueling the way. And again, you spend all these two minutes just playing with that gravity assist, that's, that's awesome, it's a great place to be. If that gets boring, you can add in the hips. If that gets boring, you can add acceleration from the feet and hips. You can always make these things more spicy. Keep going. Life through the fingertips, everybody. There you go, good. Scooping. So I draw it and I can feel that scoop of my belly lifting from the belly like I'm shoveling dirt. I mean, the movements are called young wolf digging because it really is like a big dog just digging a great big hole. You know, a happy puppy in the backyard, okay? Good. Very nice, drawing along that same central point. Make sure your movements always have that same central focus. 30 more seconds. Keeping space in those shoulders as you accelerate. And up the pace a little if you want to for the last 15. And we're pulling from the belly, make sure that belly is always involved. If we lose the belly, we're just using our shoulders. And we have so much more. Relax. <laughs> Shake that out for a second. Perfect. You have five minutes left. Just what I want. Everyone still alive and with us? <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Foot patterning. <laughs> we have baibu. So the foot turns out. We have a big kobu. So I step around. A yebu, where I step behind and a twist. Baibu, open. Kobu, close. Yebu, behind, turn, turn. Bai, ko, step behind, turn, turn. Bai, ko, ye, pivot, pivot. Good, a couple more of those. E, R, Isanga, E, R, Sa. One more, and for Eric, Zayla Ibian. Good, and a couple more so I can watch. Very nice, Chris. Yep, that's the idea, Karen, that's great. Good, Eric, good, Craig. Let's see, Carol, do one more. Nailed it. Okay, we're gonna add some pause into this now. So, I'm gonna show the screen up just a fraction. So this is the Yao Chuan, the back punch from Ryong style Bagua. If my hands are here to the side, notice the space between hands and chest. As I turn, both palms come palm up. My outstretched hand is gonna to go to the opposite high shoulder. As I step behind, turn for that strike. So again, from double fist, 
Double palm, outstretched hand goes to high opposite shoulder. Step behind as I uncoil from my hip. Again, Baibu, palms up. Kobu, left hand to right shoulder. Yebu, as I uncoil that Yebu, there's my hit. From there, Baibu, right hand to left shoulder. Kobu, Yebu, turn strike. Baibu, left hand to right shoulder. Kobu, step behind and twist. Yao Chuan. Baibu, right hand to left shoulder. Kobu, step behind, the Yebu, turn. Yao Chuan. Two more together. Bai. Ko. Ye. Bai. Ko. Ye. Now all of you watch me for a second, okay? The hardest part here is maintaining a circular body feel as we travel in a pretty harsh descending straight line, right? Just took down that angle. So as I come through here, that Bai Bu, I'm making real sure that there's space in my shoulders and an equal space in my hips. As I kobu, everything is wrapping around a post. Big hook. As I yebu behind, that coil opens, but it's not a straight line, it's oblong. I'm just drawing that circle into an oval. Now my circles are big and round. My circles compress and are all elastic -y. My circle stretches into an oval. Big compressed oval. Does that kind of conceptually make sense? Awesome. Let's do two more together nice and slow, then I'll watch all of you give it a try, okay? So again, with that Yao Tuan to the side, Bai Bu, two big circles. Kobu, wrap the post. Ye Bu, carry that circle into an oval. See how both the shoulders and the hips, that kind of oblong feel? Big circle. Big hug. Stretch that circle. All right, back and forth, give that a try. Good, Karen. Very nice. Your, your first stretch is good. Your second stretch is good. As you continue, make sure that you're wrapping and that there's space in all those rings. So that you're gonna, there's that feeling of just sort of like your constrictor sque squeezing against something rubbery and elastic that you can't quite pull in, right? And so we're here, big stretch, elastic squeeze, and that squeeze pulls that leg in. From there, pivoting the body, pop. There you go, good. You want to start playing with those kind of innate elastic points of the movement. That's what's going to bridge the gap from step to step, make the stepping feel more smooth and less awkward. Okay. Very, very nice. Thank you. Yeah, it feels a lot better than last time. Good, good. Yeah, this one, it's, it's a hard start, but it's a really fun one to practice once you get a feel for it. Yeah, thanks. This one drove me crazy. It was about three years before I figured out what this One more, last one. Nice job, everybody. Okay. Check that out for a second. Can I do this on Fritz Elder? Please. All right. So I just got off the phone with Fritz, and he's excited about coming out um, via Zoom. And <laughs> <laughs> um, he was thinking about doing his seminar in conjunction with Daryl. So he would be like the basic kind of the warm up guy, and then Daryl would follow with Daryl thing. <laughs> he was like, Do they want to learn nine form? Do they want to do this? And he was like, Why don't we do what we did the last time? That was kind of fun. That sounds pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Good. Um, that was like a great plan. Okay. Okay. Um, individual Taiji focus class with him that would be maybe like, like Kung Fu with Taiji basics that's kind of his own thing 
or he could gear it more into the small differences. Sorry, what was the last thing you said? Or he could put it more into flow.